Hi loves, Chantal Hyde, Canada's dating coach, author of this incredible book right here, No More Assholes. Now, I want to talk to you about how to get someone to fall madly in love with you. These are tips that you can use from day one so that you can draw that love in and get this person falling head over heels because you are a creature unlike any other. Are you ready for this? Get your pen and paper because this is a biggie right here. So I'm going to be looking at my notes because I, I just came up with this today. So it's still even fresh for me, but my God, the ideas that come out of my head are brilliant. And if you have any question about that, then go into my book, No More Assholes and look up the seven qualities that real men look for in a woman. Take that chapter to any good man that you know and they will say, I cannot think of a single thing to add to that. So I am the man whisperer right here. Let me teach you how you're going to create so much love in your relationship going forward. Now, the first thing you need to know is the association game. I do this all the time with my husband. I am very mindful of letting him laugh when he scares the bejesus out of me. Because what happens when he does that laughter is a jolt of dopamine, and that is your brain's reward drug, and it makes you feel happy. It makes you feel like you just got a payback. So my husband likes to scare me, and then he likes to laugh his butt off because obviously it's hilarious. And instead of getting angry, which I used to do, I started watching him laugh and appreciating that he was having this chemical reaction and it was associated to me. So my husband associates feeling good to me. So make sure that you are very conscious of the association game and that you're giving opportunities for the person that you want to have fall madly in love with you, for them to associate feeling good to you. This is going to pay off huge inside their brain for them and also huge for you because you're carving yourself in a very positive way inside their brain, which is super cool. Now, the second thing is don't vomit. If you need to vent, and, and that, you know, obviously when you're getting to know somebody, when you're developing a friendship, when you have a relationship with someone and they say, how's your day? Yes, do touch on what was bothering you. But when it comes to vomiting, and what I mean by vomiting is your past insecurities or you're not able to get a hold of your feelings and you have all this angst and this frustration, maybe some anger inside of you, and it's not associated to that person, it was picked up on the way, but then you vomit that onto them. This is going to create a very negative mindset towards you in that person because then they're going to start wondering, uh oh, where's the next vomit coming from? And they're going to start feeling defensive when you get around them. So avoid the vomit. Learn how to manage your emotions. Do some meditation. Ladies, you got girlfriends, they can take the vomit. Trust me. When you need to vent and let it all out and you need that listening ear, women are much better adapted to that than men are. We process 20,000 words a day. Men process five to 7,000 words a day. So when it comes to a verbal unleashing of all the things that are bothering you, I do recommend you say that for your girlfriends. They are well positioned up here to absorb it and be there for you. Another thing, last thing, is you want to model a functional relationship. So you want to present solutions and not problems. So before you go and talk to your partner about something that's bothering you, make sure that you have fleshed it out yourself and you've come up with the solution so that when you're presenting the problem, you can also present the solution. Because listen, if you're confused about how to fix it, your partner's probably confused about how to fix it too. And the blind leading the blind usually just go around in circles. So have a solution before you present a problem. 
calm your mind. So again, going back to meditation, you wanna shrink your amygdala, which is your brain's fight or flight. When you do meditation, it actually decreases the size of that part of your brain, which decreases your capacity to feel stress and anxiety. So it actually reduces how much you feel you want to vomit, which is win, win, win. Uh, show acceptance for off moments. Listen, we're all going to be moody. We're all going to get hormonal. We are all going to have moments where we're going to go bit and then we're gonna wonder, uh oh, where did that come from? And the person in front of me didn't deserve what I just did. So you know to forgive yourself for those moments, but also forgive your partner for those moments. Let them slide, let them slide, because more often than not, they will do a quick course correction because they realize that what just happened had nothing to do with you. And never make your partner pay for telling the truth. I did this deal inside here with my husband a very long time ago. I told myself when he comes and tells me something, no matter how much I don't like it, I am not going to make him pay. I'm not gonna make him regret for giving me that piece of information. I value honesty and openness in my relationship and the biggest way to shut it down is by making someone regret they said anything to me. So make sure that when somebody comes and tells you the truth, even if you don't like it, whoozah, and then go vent to your girlfriends, okay? So if you like that advice, I have a ton more from you. Please go through my YouTube channel, find the stuff that interests you, go to my website, canadasdatingcoach.com. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, iTunes, I have a podcast. Pinterest, I am everywhere. Wherever it is that you like to go online, Google me, you're gonna find me. I will see you soon. Much love for you, Mick.